So Roz is definitely alive. I saw her myself. She was driving the van that Terry and the others got into. It's fantastic, isn't it? But why is she with Sunstorm? Did they force her or was she tricked? If Terry was telling the truth about this stuff, we are the ones who've been sold a dummy. Jan, Sunstorm were right. This stuff is lethal. The virus research registers say what we have is a virus bonded to human genetic material. It can be fine-tuned to affect specific people. You mean to target particular ethnic groups? More specific than that. It could be programmed for, say, right-handed males, six foot two, fair hair and blue eyes. All they need is... Hey. ...a DNA sample from the target. Do you think General Russell knew exactly what Dr Corcoran was making? Well, let's find him and ask, shall we? General Russell, please. It's DOIC. Corcoran said it was a medical breakthrough. Maybe we should stop believing what these scientists tell us. Well, he can't just have disappeared. It's imperative that I talk to him as soon as possible. No one knows where he is. It's dead! General Russell, what are you doing here? I didn't want to embarrass you, Jan, so I took the liberty of disabling the alarms. What are you talking about? I'm closing you down. Are you mad? Does the security executive know about this? Under the Security Services Act of 1994, I have the authority to suspend all Bureau activity. The Bureau is not under military command. It is now. Your apparently dead agent, Roz Henderson, has been collaborating with the Sunstorm Group. It is clear to me that the Bureau's loyalties have been compromised. There's nothing wrong with our loyalty. General. I thought we were both on the same side. Consider your contracts terminated and all security clearance voided, with immediate effect. In addition, I should be removing the material you took from Felton Down. You can't do that! This stuff isn't what we thought. It's a killer virus, a dangerous genetic weapon! I know exactly what it is Get off and me. what to do with it. Get off. Leave him! You've no right to be here! What the hell do you think you're doing? Corporal, escort these people off the premises. As of now, Bureau 2 is history. Do you know what time it is? Do you know what's happened to the Bureau? I'm afraid I don't conduct business from home. I said, do you know about the Bureau? He stormed in with a troop of armed men as if it was starting a coup d'etat. Don't be ridiculous. I want the Bureau reopened and Russell relieved of his command. The General has my complete confidence, which is more than I can say for Bureau 2 right now. Bureau 2 isn't the issue. I understand that one of your people has been working with this Sunstorm group. Yes, well, uh, I'm looking into that. The Bureau was set up as a fringe agency, working in the shadows. That sort of freedom cuts both ways. Russell is acting like a renegade. You need us to stop him. What I need are security agents I can trust. 
not mavericks who jump into bed with political agitators. The Bureau remains closed. Mrs. Gardner, I know Russell is a friend of yours, but that is irrelevant. He is one of this country's most decorated soldiers. If you are going to make accusations like that, you need firm proof, not suppositions and guesswork. What do you think, Jason? What shall I tell the insurance company this time, eh? Beckett. Roz. Roz, what the hell is going on? Nick, I, um, I had to call because... Where are you? What, what are you and Terry up to? We're, we're fine. We had to go undercover. Terry... Why? Beckett, I can't explain all that now. Look, Roz, just tell me where I can meet you, OK? I'll be with you in five minutes. You know, this tracking device was designed by Ross Anderson herself. Poetic justice. He's on the move. Don't you think you should have talked to me before making a call like that? I owed Beckett an explanation. Who was that? Your bureau friends. The call could have been traced. I routed it indirectly. Even I'd have trouble tracing it. But I thought we agreed. No contact. Chris, my colleague, my friends are involved whether you like it or not. Yeah, well, we don't like it. I always said it was a mistake going out. Talk to me first. Yes. I'm sorry. I don't need Beckett. We can handle this ourselves. <laughs> like we used to. You and me against the world. Yes. You and me. What's wrong with that? Oh, Terry, that was years ago. We can do it again. Nothing's changed. Well, I have. I want different things now. Maybe I was wrong to come to you. No. I was glad to help. But even you must admit things are getting out of hand. We need the others now. I feel a bit like a stateless person. You're all sealed up. It's lucky I kept some equipment in the car. The way he just marched in on us. That wasn't an official operation. You really think General Russell's a traitor? Russell knew that gun was a genetic weapon. I bet he knows a lot more as well. I wonder what he's planning. thinking about this for so long. Now here, I don't know what to say. Well, explanation might help, Ross. Do you know, have you got any idea what I've been through in the last few days? I'm have sorry. you any idea? <sighs> you okay? Yeah. Come inside and meet the others. It's uh, 
bit of a long story. Beckett's taking us right to the Sunstormers. Make sure they won't be able to interfere with our plans. Russell's making a phone call. Can you get anything? He's talking to someone called Hawks. What about the Armenians, sir? Your Avenkian's due at the Perseus Hotel at noon. You can catch up with him there. What's he up to? What did he say? We need to find out who your Avenkian is. Thing, it's time we pulled our resources. We've been doing fine on our own. We're fighting the establishment, and you are part of the problem. There's no way we can team up. Beckett, you used your jeep to get here, didn't you? Yeah, why? They've got access to our onboard trackers. That's how they found Terry and me when my car crashed. Ross. We'll check they're not here already. Just hold on a second, hold on a second. We don't know who's out there. We know what we're doing. Jan doesn't get the Bureau reopened soon, we spend our lives in cyber cafes. Why is this web page taking so long? These machines don't have the power we could access at the Bureau. Andreas Yerevenkian, Armenian biochemist. Speciality genetic engineering of viruses. So. If Russell is behind this genetic weapon, this could be his partner. Russell said Yerevenkian was arriving at the Perseus Hotel. Let's go, then. Mm. <laughs> 
So I said, with respect, only I am qualified to make that judgment. <laughs> Glad you're a creature of habit, Simon. Liquid lunch. Barbara, what a delightful surprise. Or, um, should I call you Jan or Leo, I see these days? Yeah, sole point at the moment. Better stick to Barbara. Oh, don't tell me you need my professional services. <laughs> no. Though I think sometimes I ought to have my head examined doing this job. Oh, and always find space on the couch for you, Barbara. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Got a drink? No, I won't, thanks. Uh, do you think I could have a word? Yeah, sure. I, um... I need some information about a patient of yours. Oh, steady on, Barbara. Patient, doctor, confidentiality and all that. Oh, come on. We both work for the government. It's General Alistair Russell. Word has it that he had some kind of mental breakdown. Do you know anything about that? I thought your techno-boffins could find out anything at the press of a button. Yes, well, my usual sources are unavailable. So I'm second best, am I? <laughs> all right. Yes, Russell had a breakdown at the end of 95. Depression. He had some sessions with me. And what caused the breakdown? Oh, some kind of an accident at a base. It was hushed up. I didn't get all the details, not even from Russell. And he made a full recovery? Why, what's he done? He pressed the Armageddon button. Simon, do you think he's unstable? I recommended retirement on health grounds when I was overruled. Thanks, Simon. Hello, can I help you? Professor Yerevenki, you have a room for me? That's the guy. Excuse me. You stay with him. I'll chase the luggage. General Russell. Never heard of him. What about Dr. Corcoran of Felton Down? I know him by reputation. I've read some of his articles. Listen, why would anyone want your suitcase? There was nothing of value in there. Not even my deposition for the commission today. Commission? The International Commission on Ethics in Science. That's why I'm here. I followed the car. Just guess where it's taken me. Russell's got the suitcase. The professor's never heard of him. Well, the general's obviously heard of him. You always were the lucky one. I've got two cracked ribs, Terry's got second degree burns, and you get off scot free. Hmm. I left the bureau. Why? To look for you, Ross. Oh, Nick. But the Bureau's your life. Yeah, it's part of my life. They had a memorial service for you, you know. Everybody was convinced you were dead. I sat there wondering if they were right and I was going crazy. Ed and Alex are getting a bit worried about me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was thinking about you all the time. Well, then why didn't you get in contact with me? You know, we were all coming around to a party at your house, and the next minute, well, you just disappeared. I promise you, there was nothing else I could do. I was trying to protect you. You disappeared to protect me? Yes, to protect you and the Bureau. That night, I was waiting for you all to turn up and Terry rang the bell. I thought it was you. Well, it's out. 
You've done a great job of something your voice. The last time we met, we'd had a blazing row, and he didn't think I'd let him in if I knew it was him. Terry, what are you doing here? You've got to help me. I've known Terry since I was 16 years old. But I'd never seen him like this. Sunstorm have been oh, gathering data Terry, on not human that again, research. Please. I was really spooked. We stumbled across something. Oh, really? What is it this time? I didn't believe him at first. Bioweapons. I mean, you can't just hide something like that. He insisted I couldn't involve you or the Bureau. Someone's developed a genetic virus designed to kill. It's being manufactured secretly in a government lab. Whoever's behind this is right at the top. Maybe even in the security services. He said that anyone who'd found out the truth so far had ended up dead. Were they? I just had a meeting with our informant from the lab. They must have followed the taxi. If I ever meant anything to you, I need you now. Come on. I had to believe him. Terry isn't someone to shout fire unless there's smoke. I only had the keys to the Cortina. It seemed like they hadn't seen us. But what I didn't know was that they had another man outside. I thought you trashed the flight yourselves to cover your tracks. No, that must have been them. They had access to our in-car trackers, the new system I installed, the one I thought was so secure. glass cut my arm. That's why you found blood in the car. I thought we'd shaken them off. Not a strong swimmer. They had to put him out through the window. The water was so cold, and I knew they were still coming. We struggled to the quayside and hid. When they caught up with us, it looked as if we'd drowned. Afterwards, we decided to take advantage of the crash, but Beckett, I promise you, we never planned any of this. Well, it certainly convinced a lot of people. I'm sorry I couldn't tell you. As long as everyone thought we were dead, we were safe. You trusted him, but not me. No, I didn't want to risk your life. Beckett, we knew the people behind this were very powerful and very dangerous. We had to be independent. There were others to consider. Like my source at Felton Downs, she works for Dr. Corcoran himself, the man who developed the bioweapon. And what were you going to do when you found it, eh? Were you going to go on a phone-in show or write to the papers? We'd have come back to the Bureau when we had the proof. And in the meantime, to hell with everybody else. Chris and Morag gave their lives. We're talking about possible genocide, and you're complaining about not getting a phone call? Oh, Terry, please. Don't you think it was hell for me, too? Not being with you, not being able to tell you the truth? Oh, I'm sure Terry looked after you just fine. Oh, Beckett. You have nothing to be jealous of. Rose! <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wanted to bring champagne, but Ed said it'd be over the top. Oh, did he? For you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Come here, you. Oh. Special request from the general. He wants this primed for a specific target. We have the DNA sample. 
for you to work with. A human target? No, I won't do it. What are you worried about? We've already got the virus. But without genetic targeting, viruses are useless as weapons. Far too random. Here's something more specific. I can't do it. <laughs> yes, you can. If we could access the databases at the Bureau, we'd soon uncover what Russell's doing. Yeah, it's about time we took back what's ours. Break into the Bureau. I'm gay. And me. Let's go. You stay here. The three of us will be fine. <laughs> you need all the help you can get. You need all the rest you can get. He's right. Stay here. There is something we can do. Our source at Felton Down. We must warn her it's all about to come out. This is embarrassing. Oh, you're not kidding. No. Things just haven't been the same since Jan made you bureau chief. Hang on. Jan made you bureau chief? Yeah. I had no choice. <laughs> well, I guess she made the right decision under the circumstances. I hope this isn't going to cause a problem. Oh, I'll adjust in time. But you know I've got a history for insubordination, don't you? Alex, run a thorough search on both Russell and Yurovenkin. Right. I'll see where Jan is. Jan? Ed, where are you? We're back in the Bureau. Look, if they find you, it'll only make things worse. Be careful. Listen, I think I'm onto something here. I want you to do an archive check for me. The date is August the 6th, 1995. Yeah. General Russell's wife and children all died on the same day. I want to know why and how. How do we play it with Corcoran? Discreetly. There's no idea Karen has any involvement with Sunstorm. Karen? Terry, look at this. I don't think it's Russian. Could be Armenian. A-U-Y. Andreas Yerovenkian. A geneticist. Yes. The man Ed and Alex met. Terry, this is why Russell's men stole Yerovenkian's suitcase. Ross. Dr. Corcoran. He's dead. So where's Karen? August 6, 1995, there was an accident at a military research lab. Russell was base commander. At the time, everything was covered up. The official report has a 100-year secrecy ban on it. It paints a very different picture. There was a leak of a genetically engineered virus. Eight people died, including Russell's family. That explains the inscription on the grave. Sacrifices on the altar of sounds. There's more. The director of the lab was... Andreas Yerovenkian. Yeah. After the accident, he left the lab and hasn't worked for the military since. So, it is revenge Russell wants. Why didn't his men just kill the guy at the hotel when they had the chance? I think Roz has the answer to that. Russell's men have stolen Yerovenkian's personal things to get a DNA sample. All they need is one hair. They plan to target the genetic weapon against Yerovenkian himself. Russell blames for killing his family. 
But where will he do it? Somewhere public. To make his point. gets on the way, the air conditioning will kick in. That sends cold air flowing through here. As soon as the temperature in the ducting drops to five degrees, the virus is released. Seal it. Our mission is nearly over. You don't have to stay. We're not leaving till it's finished. He killed your family, sir. He should be punished. The whole world will see him punished on the television news tonight. He'll die in front of a dozen international statesmen. My point will be made. You knew Russell was unstable. Why didn't you believe what I told you? Alistair is a close family friend, godfather to one of my boys. I think you'd better have a look at this. Where did you get this? It's code red plus. Have me arrested later, just read it. Oh, the poor man. I knew he'd lost his family, but not the circumstances. Yes. Well, it was covered up by your predecessors at the security executive. Look, Russell will be at the conference center already. I want you to warn the commissioners and get this hearing postponed. The eyes of the world are on that commission. It will be extremely embarrassing for the government if we rush in there mob-handed. It will be extremely embarrassing if he kills Yerevenkian. Or would you prefer to let him have his revenge and then cover that up? Bureau 2 must stop him. But we're closed. Officially, yes. However... DOIC, of course, if your people get this wrong, that will give us complete deniability. <laughs> Professor Yerevenkian, the Commissioner ready for you. I hope so. What I have to say may raise a few eyebrows. Corcoran. Well, the, the two who work for Russell. They wanted him to do an experiment, bonding DNA to a virus, but, but he wouldn't do it. So that they, they threatened to kill me. Unless he did what they said. Karen, they used hairs from the brush to bond the virus to Yerevenkian's DNA. Dr. Corcoran didn't do it, though. What? He pretended to do what his men wanted. To save me. But I know he didn't do it, really. I mean, DNA bonding takes a long time. So Russell thinks what he has will kill just Yerevenkian, but actually, it'll kill anybody in the vicinity. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Andreas Yerevenkian. 
I have a very personal reason for being here today. I want to make a confession and to bury a few ghosts. Um, passes, please. Uh, we're from the Bureau. Bureau? What Bureau? You need a pass. You didn't get a phone call from the office, then? No. I'm sorry, you'll have to leave. OK, well, we'll just go and make a phone call and see if we can't sort this out. Won't take a minute. OK, look, um, I'm going to create a diversion where you two slip through. OK, uh, you find Russell. We'll look for the virus. All right. And check the air conditioning vents, OK? It's the office. They need to speak to a Mr. Graham Clark. That's me. No. Hello? Hello? Take him out. I'll tell the general. This isn't work. Hey! General Russell, the Bureau people are here. Hawks is after them. So stop them. Kill them if you have to. Well, where do we start? I don't know. We better look for some sort of uh, maintenance hatch. Where's Hawks? I don't know. Get back to the air conditioning controls. Make sure there's no interference. Sir. A series of tiny mistakes, each insignificant in themselves. As a result, there was an escape of a microscopically small amount of virus which I was working on. The consequences were tragic. Someone's been working on this one. Yeah, it's been sealed. There's something in there. Yeah, that must be it. Let's find another way in. I have shown that our actions can sometimes be the cause of events which are entirely unforeseen and for which we are totally unprepared. As you are now, Professor. Who are you? I am here to assist with your evidence. With a practical demonstration. No, please, let him through. You speak very eloquently, Professor. My name is Russell. Does that mean anything? Or maybe you were too busy to find out the names of your victims. It was my family you killed. Their deaths have haunted me. I tried to find out who died so that I could contact the relatives, but um, I was blocked by the authorities. Hey, wait! It's at the end, about 20 meters away. I'm never going to get in there. You won't, but I will. Well, maybe not. There's only one thing for it. Crash diet? Take your clothes off. Huh? Take your clothes off. So, you just forgot all about it and carried on where you left off? I immediately severed all links with the military. But it was too late. You had already made your contribution. Meanwhile, accidents will continue to happen until such time as you and your colleagues 
learn that there must be a limit. Good job you're not claustrophobic. Good job I can't punch your lights out. If we limit scientific research, we'll never progress. Work on these lethal viruses has produced cures for some diseases. Whatever cures you produce, to bring my family back. I've got it. How's it triggered? It's a thermostat control set to go off if the temperature drops below five degrees. My son was just 17 when he died. When you, when you killed him. Oh my God, the air conditioning's coming on. It's getting cold. I'll get it shut down. Keep the dancing warm. The temperature's dropping. He had plans to be a surgeon. He could have saved lives. But he never had the chance. I can't imagine how much you must have suffered. No. You can't. But I'm going to give you the opportunity to try. by science, now you'll die by science. I'm releasing a virus engineered to kill only you. Your death will serve as a moral lesson to the whole world. when you were dead, but you're too late. Feel that cool breeze, Professor? Air conditioning. The virus is about to be released. The virus you have isn't targeted to the Professor's DNA. Everyone in this room will die. <laughs> it's true. Dr. Corcoran deceived you. So we all die. Sometimes it takes a public disaster to open people's eyes. Come on, Professor. Let's get this thing warmed up.
And I'll declare Bureau 2 well and truly reopened. We never closed. <laughs> nice to come through the doors, rather than through the ceiling. Particularly in your new suit, Chief. Hey. Yes. Very nice, Ed. OK, Alex, get everything up and running. It's strange. In the end, General Russell and Sunstorm wanted the same thing. An end to biological warfare. They just went about it the wrong way. Where are Ros and Beckett? I think they've got an accommodation problem. Thank you. 